Hi everyone, today let's talk about Microsoft's announcement. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel and let's get started. So Microsoft announced new PCs with AI chips from Qualcomm and this is featuring their new Copilot Plus standard. Copilot is their AI tool and they are now embedding them into laptops, which is pretty cool. I still think it'll be interesting to see exactly how this helps users become more productive. But from the economic standpoint, Qualcomm absolutely going to benefit Microsoft benefiting from another AI announcement. They continue to be basically in the lead at this point. I know Microsoft and Google seem to be leading, but Microsoft has OpenAI, and in my opinion, they are the leader right now. They also mentioned they will release new PCs later with AMD and Intel chips, but Qualcomm is the current manufacturer, and you can see they're going to start at $1,000. They're also going to feature ARM-based chips that can handle AI models to defend its Windows. Windows franchise. And this is on the back of Apple doing the same thing, continuing to use ARM architecture and moving away from Intel. They seem to be the laggard in the group. And you can see here the Microsoft CEO said that AI is going to be a first class part of every PC in the future. And on the back of this, Morgan Stanley announced that ARM systems should be about 14% of all PC shipments in 2026, up from zero in 2023. So ARM absolutely exploding in terms of growth and Microsoft popped on this news as well. Moving over to Fear and Greed, you can see we were at a 46. We were at a 486 on the previous read as well, basically flat here over the past couple of days, and really no change on any of these metrics. Continuing to watch breadth hover in regular greed while strength is in fear. And you can see the VIX did pick up just a smidgen, nothing crazy, and safe haven demand surging into extreme greed while junk bond demand remains in neutral. Moving over to earnings, we did get Palo Alto today. They did beat massive on the top and bottom lines. Everything was good there. Lows tomorrow in the morning and then NVIDIA on Wednesday after hours. That's obviously going to be the big one for the week. You also have Target, TJ Maxx, a couple of retailers in there. And then for Thursday, you have Intuit, Medtronic, Autodesk, Ross, as well as Dollar Tree. A couple of bigger names in there that are interesting. Moving over to the economic calendar, there was basically nothing here for today. A couple of Fed members speaking. Looking at Tuesday, we don't have much here either. A couple of Fed members speaking, but nothing on the three-star list. And then looking at Wednesday, we get existing home sales, 20-year bond, Fed minutes on Wednesday. So Wednesday in general is going to have the most data and we're getting NVIDIA earnings. So should be a volatile Wednesday. Moving over to Max Payne, you can see top of the puts here, 532, 531, right in that zone. That would give you about another half a percent higher for the week. Total options, not very many. Put call ratio, pretty moderate. So nothing crazy here for Max Payne this week. Moving over to the chart, starting off with the S&Ps here on the hourly, you can see we did get back to that trend line. We got below it here on Thursday last week, did go higher on Friday, continued that trend, hit the trend line, and then we did break down a little bit from that zone. Daily chart shows a little bit different of a story, but momentum continues to step down here just slightly. So in terms of thesis, really no change. Go ahead and add some levels, 527.35, that's the low here from that Friday session. And then I added a 531.47. That's the wick high here from Thursday last week and then here this week. So right now in this choppy zone, we'll see if it breaks higher or not. RSI still hovering at overbought conditions. Really no change in terms of the thesis. Sideways consolidation potentially looking at a breakdown. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see that same thesis. Consolidation at that upper ATR band. 528.29 is that level. You can see we're above it by just a few pennies. Momentum staying bullish here on the volume weighted MACD. A little bit more more bullish than we're seeing on the regular MACD. Looking at that four hour chart, you can see we pulled back from that upper ATR just a little bit. We're hovering right on top of that eight EMA 529.80. Momentum here is bearish, but we're not really seeing a breakdown in structure yet. And then looking at that hourly chart, we are in bullish conditions after that big push higher. So ATR support 528.88, but really we're just in the middle of this range. You can see that sideways choppy price action on the hourly. And then volume weighted MACD is actually a little bit bearish here on the shorter time frame. Moving over to the NASDAQ, you can see straight up on the market open and then sideways choppy action after that right at my level 454.40. Technically, it's above it, so that is bullish. You do have some upper trend resistance up around 458.60. I don't know if we're going to get there. That would be a full 1% higher from current levels. You can also see that RSI divergence here. Same price, way higher on the RSI read. And then you can see it here on the daily chart. We did close pretty much on the high. 
This is a new high close for the NASDAQ as well, so that is bullish, but you can continue to see that momentum is starting to fade. That is two full days in a row of steps down on momentum. We're going to get some kind of pullback eventually, but right now it's straight to the moon, it seems like. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see that upper ATR on the daily chart sitting at 453.35. We overthrew that by about $1.50, but continuing to hit that resistance, you can see 98 EMA sitting at 448.40, still bullish conditions. You can see it stepping up here today. Four hour chart didn't quite hit that upper ATR. And you can also see bearish momentum on that volume weighted MACD. So a little bit of mixed signals, but mostly bullish on the trend. And then as you would suspect on the hourly chart, you can see we're back into bullish conditions. 452.51 is your support sitting right on top of that EMA 454.36. Upper ATR on the hourly 455.50. So about a dollar of potential upside as we continue to grind slowly higher. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, you can see the Russell hit that trend line and then stopped almost to the penny. It is up a little bit after hours, so if it can hold above that, we're probably pushing up to 212. But you can see momentum continues to step down three days in a row, similar to the Dow here. And the Dow actually had a pretty bearish day, 0.46 to the downside. Broke the level 398.76. Now we're pushing back to that 9 EMA 369.25. So right now, a little bit of mixed signals, Dow pulling back, Russell holding up there, waiting to see if we can get above that trend line. Right now, seems like we can a little bit with that after hours push. Let's see that on the hourly chart. You can see here, breakout, retest, hold that level. As long as it can hold that push tomorrow, should be in good shape. Moving over to movers here today, we got Carnival jumping 7.27%, and then we got Gold jumping 0.4%. This is your all-time high at 225.09 for Gold. If it can get above that, we're gonna be back into price discovery. Momentum is bullish seems like gold is set to go higher tomorrow and then carnival big change of trend here with a massive gap and go big volume headed towards overbought conditions and really all of the major car cruise lines got a big jump here today and this seems to be a change and you can see on some of these previous moves carnival can really run here you can see this move was about 50 percent on that and if this seems to be a little bit of a breakout if we get another 50 percent higher that would be up in the 22s 23 zone which i think is the price target currently for Carnival. 2223 is what I've seen from analysts. So it seems like Carnival might be catching a bit of a move here with a couple of dollars of upside and potential. Moving over to the MAG7, you can see still basically flat at that upper resistance. 367.10. We are technically above it by a few pennies, but you could argue we're still below these previous wick highs right at these previous on these previous candles here. So right there in that same zone that we've been in, momentum continues to fade. RSI going a little bit higher, not over bought so i still think this might wick that upper trend line up around 375.26 if that happens then we might look for some resistance and a potential rejection from there Moving over to Apple and Tesla. Apple up 0.62, still grinding right along that trend line. Actually kind of looks like the Russell right at that level. Can't seem to get above it. If it does, we're looking at 193.96, right in that 194 zone. But momentum continues to fade, definitely overbought. And then looking at Tesla here, could not confirm up above that 177.70 level. So we broke back down, sitting on the trend line. Seems like consolidation here once again. So not super great. You can actually see here on the RSI, retested that SMA and then broke down, which is definitely concerning. So looks like a little bit more of a sell here today, but it is still sitting on support. Moving over to Amazon and Qualcomm, you can see Amazon selling off here today, continues this double top potential breakdown, momentum bearish, RSI bearish. So really no change on the thesis, still sitting on a potential support, but the structure does not look great. And then looking at Qualcomm, you can see they got a big bump here today, up 2%. And this was their all time highs at 193.07. That goes all the way back here to the high in December of 21. And now we have broken above that level. And this is a substantial break. Next trend resistance would be up around 212, which would be a decent move there. You can see it's already overbought, but momentum is bullish and news like this can absolutely push a stock much higher. Moving over to Microsoft and NVIDIA, you can see both of these got a pop here today as well, 1.22 and 2.42%, so pretty strong momentum on both of these bullish. RSI gives them some room for upside before we hit overbought. And you can see we're within just a short range of these all-time highs for both of these stocks. If they break out, price discovery, no real overhead resistance in the short term. Let's go ahead and extend out that trend line. That would give you some overhead resistance for Microsoft in the 440 area, but you can see here really nothing for nvidia even if we extend this out that would put resistance all the way up around the 1100 area so 
looks super bullish on Nvidia if we can get that breakout similarly here on Microsoft. Moving over to staples and discretionaries, both of these selling off pretty strong today, 0.69 and 0.74. You can see we're selling off to that support level, 77.50 on staples, and you can see discretionary broke down from that level, 21 EMA as support right now, 176.90. If that breaks, then you're looking all the way down to 174.76. And with the Tesla move that we got here today, you kind of expect that to roll over. You can also see momentum on this continues to step down. It's taken a long time, but it's been pretty consistently bearish. You can also see two steps down here on staples but the structure is significantly more bullish so again looks like risk off to me but we really haven't seen any follow through on that yet moving over to best sectors here today we got oil and gas up 0.45 we talked about this bull flag setup clear rally in bull flag breakout looks like this is headed at least to that 161.59 area momentum about to flip to bullish here i'd watch for a breakout above 154.13 if that happens we should see a solid run there and then looking at technology, got a pop on the news that we already talked about, 1.18%. Trend resistance sitting up around 222 Should be about another 10 to $12 higher if it can get there. Moving over to oil and silver. I think I might add a commodity section to these videos. So this is a first look at it. We got oil here on the left. It's been grinding higher. We had a low back here in December of 23. Seems like we have a consolidation low here as well. In mid-May, holding that 144 EMA, looks like we're set to break higher, which fits in really well with my thesis on XOP. If that breaks, we should head up to $86. Seems like a nice little move there. And then you have silver. It's been on a run following that path of gold. But you can see it's definitely overbought. Momentum very strong. Some trend resistance up here around $30. It's kind of hard to give this a structure. You can see I built it off of this. And then we basically went straight up out of this consolidation. After we broke 2320, it's been basically straight up from there. So everything looks very powerfully high. This is all-time highs for silver, just like it is for gold. So just keep it in the back of your mind. Commodities are on a run. And I think oil's set for a breakout as well. Moving over to the tasty charts here for oil, I just wanted to highlight this momentum swing on the volume-weighted MACD. You can see there's a ton of volume in here. These are the futures. So the volume seems to spike pretty regularly. It doesn't have the same level of volume that some of the equities that we look at have so you can see tons of volume here but again look at this base off of that 144 ema momentum swinging to bullish atr resistance up at 83.30 so that would give you about three dollars of upside it does seem like oil is getting a bit of an upswing it is at the midpoint where you can see kind of an upswing here break down from that midpoint but this seems like a much more solid base clear support looking for that break higher Moving over to breadth here on the 20 and the 50 day breadth. This is actually quite concerning here. So you got breadth rolling to the bear side. We've seen momentum fading for a while, but now we're seeing 20 day breadth actually pull back. We haven't seen that in a while. We had consolidation. We're starting to break down in terms of structure. Typically, once that happens, this can be quite violent. So starting to see a roll over there definitely something to watch if we see a breakdown in tomorrow's structure across major markets this could be an indicator for warning of some lower lows and then you can see a similar move here on 50 day we had three days consolidation breaking back below 62.21 which is a little bit concerning and you can also see that momentum rolling down forgot to mention here as well on 20 day breadth looking at that rsi you can see we've broken below the sma which is concerning as well so couple of bearish indicators here on breath, something to keep in mind. Moving over to the dollar, you can see we retested that 104.4 level. Tested it here on Friday, tested it here again on Monday, and we've rallied up. So it looks a little bit bullish in the short term. We still have that overhead resistance on the hourly, 104.76 and 104.94 on the 144 and 200 SMAs. You can also see some overhead resistance here on the daily chart as well. But momentum on the daily starting to roll to bullish. Definitely interesting. Two days in a row, we've seen this before. Two days, big down step. Two days, big down step. So doesn't mean anything right now, but it is something to pay attention to. If the dollar does start to break higher, that could be quite bearish for equities. And it seems like we'll get at least a one or two day push here based on that hourly chart. Moving over to yields, you can see three days in a row of bullishness, similar to the 10 year. I still think that this is probably going to reject off that 21 EMA, which is sitting at 4.52 on the 10 year and 4.88 on the two year. 
Really, we don't have any major trends. You can see definitely mixed price action above some EMAs and below some others. Momentum, on the other hand, does show a little bit more bullishness, but RSI mixed signals there as well. So it seems like yields are not really driving price right now, but they do look a little bit bullish in the short term. Moving over to bonds, you can see JNK actually stepping up here today, headed towards that 94.82 level. Saw two bearish candles in a row, got a nice little bullish one here. Want to see that break higher and confirm some rallies to come. And then looking at TLT continues to reject off that 200, but it is back down at that 9 EMA. If it's going to hold, you would expect it to hold here. Momentum's fading a little bit. That's concerning. This might break a little bit further, maybe down to the 21 at 89.84. Overall, my thesis is still bullish on the medium to long term, but in the short term, we could still absolutely see some volatility. Let's go ahead and give that a little bit different structure. You can see definitely in line with trend, held this lower trend here. So right now, it's still very much a downtrend trend potentially rejecting off a lower high so something to keep in mind but remember medium term this is still a higher low and as long as this holds here then we should be headed to a higher high at some point Moving over to the VIX and volatility overall, move index selling off further, momentum bearish, RSI bearish. VIX on the other hand, it's basically bottomed out in this 12 region. Makes it a little bit harder to make money on options, but I don't think it's gonna stay here very long. Typically it's just a few days. And you can see it's already slightly bullish on the day. Friday was a big low, probably gonna see a little bit of an upswing here. Momentum has been slowly building to the upside, kind of like it did here. Slow build from some really low levels, and then eventually had a pretty constructive uptrend all the way up to that 22 area. So definitely an interesting zone, probably not gonna break down too much lower, but it can consolidate and you have to be patient. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I have very similar positions, managed to squeak out about a $20 gain, nothing crazy. Crazy. I got chopped up a little bit. I should have recognized that it was more of consolidation earlier on, but the NASDAQ looked pretty strong. You can see it did turn in a strong day, and I really didn't participate in that because I wasn't positioned well for it. I didn't think the Microsoft event would have such a big pop, but sure enough, it did, and I was not able to really profit from that, unfortunately. So positions for the Tuesday session, 209 put here for the IWM for 72 cents. That did pop up a little bit after hours, about 15 cents, so that seems like a good position. And then Russell, I I have a 454 put for tomorrow for 72 cents. That was in a little bit of a losing position. That fell a little bit after hours, about 50 cents, which was not super great. But I still have a call here for 56 for $2 credit. So leaning a little bit towards the bear side in the short term. And then you can see I did roll out that covered call I had to 449 for $7 credit which isn't a little bit of a profitable position here so far. Trying to make some money on these shares over the next week. I was pretty deep in the money and pretty much already at max profit. So trying to move that out, make a little money there. And then you can see I did jump into an XOP position down at 152.50 for a dollar credit. That is a four day option because they only have weekly options there. We'll see how this plays out. I might add to that position if we see a good breakout. I do like this setup and it does look clean, but you do have to keep in mind you can't make the same money on it because of those weekly options versus the daily options. So something to keep in mind, but I do like that setup. So I did take a position here. Overall, neutral going into the Tuesday session. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of Microsoft's AI day. What's it going to mean for Microsoft and all of the chip makers? And will it actually result in greater productivity for businesses out there? Or is this just a money maker for Microsoft in the short term? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.